What's your finest memory from your uh, entire aviation career? Uh, surviving the t trip on the 10th of February, 1944. And um, we caught up to it about uh, 60, 70 miles out over the North Sea, the cloud, and um, it was a German, and he was going home flat out, and it was a different model. It was either a 388 Junkers 88 or a 188, and my navigator, who was a real uh, enthusiast on, on information like this, after we shot it, and it was in flames and going down, he said, let's get in closer so I can give more information to the uh, intelligence people when we get on the ground. That was the stupidest thing I ever did in my life. I moved on in, and as it was getting close, and the airplane was completely in flames, but the mid-upper gunner was still in, in his turret on this airplane, and I saw the turret moving around uh, to uh, come uh, bear it on me, and I broke as hard as I could to the left, and he started at about six inches from one wingtip and finished up six inches from the other wingtip, but 30-some rounds of uh, 13 millimeter into my airplane, two or three through the cockpit. My navigator uh, had uh, perspex into his uh, face and things, and one went up, and we sat side by side, and one of the bullets went right through between the two of us, amongst other things. Well, it... Uh, both engines were badly shot up. Um, one of them, the piston was shot right out of it on the right-hand engine. And uh, I, I was going to crash land uh, called, uh, the radio was still working at uh, the big bomber crash strip in, in Norfolk. And they said, we can't take you because the uh, air is littered with uh, bombers coming back from a raid. So. Uh, we tried and we went on to Bradwell Bay, which was about another 50, 60 miles with this airplane in this shape. And we, uh, we landed, and the, the one thing that was most interesting on that, uh, when I went put on the brakes, there weren't any brakes. One of the rounds had gone through the air bottles in the back, so I didn't even, so I ground looped in the middle of the airfield, and there was the airplane just dripping uh, fuel and all the rest. It never caught fire. And that, without a question of a doubt, was the the most interesting one in the war. I take it then when I ask what your favorite aircraft is, you would say Mosquito. Oh, without any reservation. What were some of the, the characteristics of the aircraft, of the of Mosquito, that, that you can remember? Everything was good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm prejudiced beyond belief on it. And as, uh, for instance, your 104 there, I flew it second last flight before it came in here. And I got it up to just about 1,600 miles an hour north of here. And I liked the 104, but not, not, not in this class. <laughs> Not, not at all. Uh, it, it, uh, with this airplane, it was quite forgiving, in my opinion. Now, other people thought otherwise on the Mosquito, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I've went over a thousand hours on it, and those are real hours because uh, they didn't clock you until your wheels were on the way up airborne, and when you touch the runway, they cut the clock off because they, that saved them money in replacing engines, etc. cetera, and, uh, during the war. And that's, uh, uh, so building up the hours wasn't easy. You couldn't count taxiing time, which is something that people nowadays don't know about. <laughs> How many types of aircraft have you flown? Somewhere around 40. Wow. Yep. That's not counting marks. A typical briefing before a mission, so your navigator is off briefing and you're you're getting a briefing. That wasn't in the night fighter side of the game at all. It was hardly anything. You were on readiness. Um, you knew uh, that when you were called, if you had a time, it was a specific time, and you just took off. And then the uh, GCIs, the ground controlled radar, would uh, vector you where they wanted you to. And uh, we were limited in the North Sea because of the secrecy of the equipment or so they thought. We couldn't go past a certain thing and we just went back and forth on patrol. Now that's quite different if we were on intruding missions. There, there we were briefed of where we were to go and, and what, what to expect in the way of enemy activity. 
and that sort of thing. But uh, I didn't do a great number of those. Mine were nearly all, all night fighter, and so it was on readiness all the time.